Jesus is in the house. But guess what? We don't see Jesus, do we? We don't look at him and say, this is Jesus. Because we are the body of Christ. We are his hands. We are his feet. And we are his voice. When Jesus is in the house, that means you, the body of Christ, the church, is speaking for Christ. Today, I've been praying about this and talking about this and experiencing things over the last few months that uh, I've never experienced before. And um, it was late one night about 8 o'clock and I was in the hospital room by myself. And I had a pastor friend of mine from Mesquite come into my hospital room and he had a bottle of oil. And he anointed my head with oil and prayed over me for healing. First time that's ever happened to me. I felt at that time very honored that a man of God would come before me and pray over me. And it just so happens that I was at a pastor's meeting this last week. And uh, it was talking about the anointing the church with the power of the Holy Spirit. And the pastors were full. The church was full of pastors. And the man by the name of Francis Chan was speaking. And they said, if you want your church to be anointed with the power of the Holy Spirit upon that church, come forward. So the aisles were full of pastors being anointed for the power of God upon their church. It was awesome. Aisles full of guys coming down to be anointed for their church. So today, today I'm going to ask you to participate in this. Um, if the guys have bulletins, who has the bulletins? Javier, if any other guys have them. I need everybody or at least anybody that wants to participate to raise your hand to receive a bulletin. Because we have something that I want you to participate in this. So we're going to pass out bulletins. I think there's some other guys that have some. But uh, just keep your hands raised and, and they will be glad to get you a bulletin if we don't run out. Javier, you're running around. I th thought there were some other guys that have some. So... Um, So as we talk about this, we want you to participate in this. As we participate in this, Justin read a scripture about a paralytic man that was in Capernaum. And the paralyzed guy was born this way. And he had no legs. He could not walk. He was paralyzed. And the only way that this man would ever be able to be healed is if something supernaturally took place within his life. And Jesus has always been in around the area of Capernaum. And he was healing people left and right. He was forgiving sins. He was changing people's lives. And these four men heard that Jesus was in the house. He was in Capernaum. It was probably Peter's house, the place that he stayed the majority of time when he was in the area. These four men had compassion and had love for this paralytic man. It may have been their brother, it may have been their friend, but he had compassion for them. So here's what I want you to start thinking about today. Being a participant in the sermon. Just like I had the privilege of being a participant in a sermon this week, I want you to. I want you to think. Let me ask you a question. Are you the body of Christ? Yes. Okay. Answer is yes. 
Can Jesus use you in his work? The answer is yes. Does Jesus make you do his work? No. It is a job that we desire, something that we need. We need either a healing or we need to be a participant in somebody else's healing. So in the bulletin that you have, in the sermon notes, right at the bottom, it talks about who you need to have influence with. And in it, it will say this. Uh, Bruce Thomas, which is me. I am praying for Brett Thomas for healing. In that, what we're doing is we are putting in our hearts, I, Bruce Thomas, desire to have anointing of my faith as I bring before Jesus and minister to and pray for, you put your guy's name in there. You put your son's name in there, your daughter's name in there. You put somebody that is struggling. You put somebody in there that needs a physical healing. Maybe it's a relational healing. Maybe it's a psychological healing. Maybe it's a spiritual healing. But there's something in your life that somebody is around you that absolutely needs the body of Christ to carry them to Christ. So often the church sits idly by as people are struggling left and right and we do not understand that we are the body of Christ. And if Jesus is in the house, that means you and I are doing what Christ has asked us to do. So in order to participate today, at the end of our service, we're going to have our nine deacons that, that are godly men that have come forward to serve this church. And they're all going to have a bottle of oil. And I want you to write down in your bulletin. And it may be you need the anointing. It may be that you need a physical healing. It may be that your family needs a touch of God. It may be somebody that you're having a responsibility with or, or a power over or an influence with that you need to ask God to anoint you. I and these deacons and you, we do not have the authority and the ability to heal. We do not. But what we do have is we have the ability to ask God through the power of the Holy Spirit to anoint us to change us, and to help us. I am not charismatic, if you would say. But the Bible does say, those that need a touch of God, those that are struggling in their life, those that need a physical healing, ask the deacons and the elders, and they will anoint you. And the anointing is just this, the power of God can be upon your life. And if you're struggling, and you have family members that are struggling, and you need a physical healing, or you need an influence over somebody so you can talk to them about Christ, you are just picking them up and carrying them to Christ and lowering them down in front of Christ. And here's what the Bible says. When Jesus saw their faith, he healed his body. The man would have never been healed. The man would have never been forgiven if it wasn't for the people that brought him to Christ. And we have a responsibility as a church. And that responsibility is not just to come to church. That responsibility is to make an impact not only in my life, but in other people's lives. So some of you today need a touch from God. Some of you need the anointing that God wants to give to you. And if that is, put your own name down. Some of you need Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. See, there were three people in that house that day. There was the ones that needed the healings. And they heard that Jesus was in town and those that were needing healing came and Jesus healed. There was ones that were there to participate that brought their friends to Jesus. But there are also critics, the Pharisees. And Jesus confronted them. Jesus said to them, which is it easier for me to say, take up thy bed and walk, 
or thy sins be forgiven thee. It's easier for me to say thy sins be forgiven because there's no, there's no physical evidence that your sins are forgiven. He said it's easier for me to say take up thy bed and walk because supernaturally we cannot see our sins forgiven but we can see what God can do physically within our life. And there's not a greater authority, there's not a greater ability, there's not a greater action that what we can do as a family or a church of God is to physically and spiritually lift our family, our friends, and sometimes even ourselves up and say, Lord, I need the anointing of God upon my life. The anointing. What does that mean? The oil that we are going to anoint with represents the power of the Holy Spirit upon your life. Jesus, before he left, he said, I am going to leave and I am going to send somebody greater than myself. How can you be greater than Jesus? It's because the Holy Spirit, when he comes upon us, when he lives in residence within our lives, gives us an authority and the Holy Spirit lives in every person that has given their life to Christ. And the oil represents the power of God. So where you're struggling. We could even talk last week about the lack of forgiveness that we are living in our past and we're not moving forward to our future. And sometimes we need God's hope and we need God's help. So I'm going to give you some quick points in the bulletin. And then the majority of our time today is going to be you participating. Even before we start, I want you to start thinking about people. Or thinking about a person. Or maybe even just acknowledging that you need personally anointing from God. And not only just think about it. But write it down. Not only just write it down. But at the end of our service. Allow God. In the room that Jesus is in. Jesus is in the house. Asking the Holy Spirit of God. To anoint us with power. That we can change people's lives. That the Holy Spirit can give us power. And I want to say that before we do this, there has to be some things that we need to do. The first one, we have to care for hurting people. You have to have empathy. Not just sympathy. Not just feel sorry for them. But feel them. If there's somebody in your sphere of influence that's struggling physically, emotionally, spiritually, we live in a sin-filled world world and sometimes the sin that we have in has put us in a situation that God can only heal us we can pray for them and we can minister to them but only God can take care of them would we ask God to allow us to be sensitive it's not about preaching to people it's about ministering to people and when we minister to people then we have the ability and the freedom to preach to people. You know, in uh, John Maxwell's leadership seminar, he talks about this, the level of the lid. The level of the lid is the roof. And sometimes we are never going to be able to accomplish what we should accomplish and what God wants to accomplish until we blow off the roof. Until we raise the level of the lid. Today I'm going to challenge you to raise your spiritual lid. Not to be caught in complacency. Not to be caught into legalism. But to say, God wants to use me. God has given to me the authority because I'm a child of God and we are the house of God that we can pray for, we can encourage, and we can minister. And we will never be able to do it until we have the anointing of God upon our life. And how do we do that? We have to understand that there's hurting people around you. They're all around you. They may be in your homes or they may be at the workplace. 
but they are all around you. Jesus was in Capernaum. And Jesus was teaching. And imagine Jesus teaching. And these guys walked up the roof. They uncovered the roof and they lowered their friend down in front of Jesus. They had to have compassion for him. Could you imagine the owner of the home? What are you doing? Tearing up my roof. But Jesus knew that there was going to be some things that were going to take place. Because Jesus knew their heart. So I want to ask you this. Do you have sympathy? Do you have empathy for people? And then, am I willing to work with a team? See, the church, we're a team. Glenville is a team. We come together to minister and to be ministered to. We all know what the acrostic of team stands for. Together, everyone accomplishes more. Together, we can do greater things than what we can do. The synergy of a church that's in one step, that's going in the same direction. The synergy of a church can change people's lives. But can we work together? Today, we are going to ask the church, the body of Christ, Glenville, whether you're a member or not, to come together and ask the anointing of God upon your individual life and your sphere of influence over others. We may not have it all together, but together we have it all. And we have it all, and we have Christ within our life. We can work as a team to do great and mighty things within our church and within our life. But see, in order to do mighty things, I have to see obstacles as opportunities. See, these four men that carried, G carried their friend to Jesus, there were some obstacles. And in those obstacles, they could have looked at that and they said, it's too much. It's too hard. I have to work too much. So what were some of those obstacles? The crowd. The crowd was an obstacle. There were so many people in the house that one that needed Jesus couldn't get to Jesus because there were so many people in the house. Folks, let me tell you sometimes the church gets in the way of Jesus. Sometimes we are a crowd that we enjoy listening about Jesus. But when people are trying to carry people to Jesus, sometimes the crowd gets in the way. And we can never be an obstacle to what God wants to do within our life. The house itself was small. There was no room in the house. So sometimes obstacles are in front of us. And when those obstacles are in front of us, sometimes we just give up. So even the roof itself was an obstacle. They carried him up and they said, what should we do? We can't get through the window. We can't get through the door. But then they said, there's always an opportunity. Sometimes we have to look through our obstacles as opportunities. And if it's not easy, sometimes we just say, I'll quit. But sometimes when we're talking about a spiritual condition, a physical condition, a mental condition of somebody, it's never going to be easy. The person that you need to be anointed for may not want you to talk to them. It may not be somebody that has a spiritual bone in their body. But the Bible says Jesus desires all men to be saved. All men. And what that means is the body of Christ, we need to go to the entire world. But sometimes before we go overseas to that world, we have to deal with our world. Not only our world, but we have to deal with our sphere of influence and even to our families. Sometimes we have to see the obstacles as opportunities. And there's plenty of obstacles in your life and obstacles in mine. And I said last week that this, the last three or four sermons leading up is to start this series. Is because 
Sometimes we have lived so much in our past that we feel like that we're not worthy of our future. And sometimes we even say this, that I have sin within my life, how can I minister to someone else? And here's the key to the whole point, is the anointing of God. We have been saved by the blood of Christ. We have been forgiven, and Jesus is the greatest forgiver of all. The greatest thing that Jesus has done, he came to forgive sins. We have been forgiven. We have to act as if we are forgiven. We have to live our life pleasing to God. So God can use us in a mighty way. But here's what they did. Once they saw opportunities, they looked for creative ways to solve their problems. They looked for creative ways to solve the problems. They uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they lay down the bed in which the paralytic man was laying. Could you imagine what they did? They didn't carry their tools with them. They, they came to the house and they looked at the house and they, Jesus is right there. He is so close to us. But the crowd was too big. The obstacle was overwhelming. What can I do to get to Jesus? What can I do to get my friend to Jesus? What can I do to get forgiven? They looked and they could have said, too much. Too many obstacles. But they said, there's always a way through every obstacle. So they went through the outside doorway up to the roof. And they laid that man down. And he said, don't worry, we'll be back. And I'm sure these four men, they went and they found tools to get through the obstacles. There's always tools to deal with our obstacles. And you're sitting there and you're thinking, what kind of tools could you use? What they would have used would be a hoe, maybe, maybe a saw to get through the wood and get through the thatch to get the roof open. But we're not climbing a physical roof to get our friends to Jesus. We're talking about a spiritual roof that we have to climb. And I just listed a couple things to look for opportunities and being creative. You ready for this? Very simple. Be kind. Use kindness. Sometimes we get mad at somebody that doesn't agree with us. And we fight with them instead of to love them. And sometimes we use the Bible to beat them up instead of use the Bible to love them. And a leader, the body of Christ, what we must do is we must use the word of God as the anointing, as the power that God uses to convict somebody of their sin, of the wrong way. Use acts of kindness. Write them a note telling them how much you care for them. You know, a note. If you've ever received a note. And on that, they say, we love you. And they sign their name. If it was your kids writing you a note or a text or an email, you know what happens every time I receive a positive note? Because <laughs> I've received some that are not so positive. But when I receive a positive note, you know what happens? It puts a smile to my face. Somebody is thinking of me. Somebody cares about what I am going through. And it puts a positive throat and it, it makes me smile. Tell them that they're appreciated. Tell them how much they mean to you. And when you do that, it, it, it gives you a door of opportunity. And this is the hard one. Sometimes we need to listen to them instead of talking about them. And sometimes when somebody is hurting, we need to listen to why they're hurting. And to use their surroundings and their circumstances in order to open a door. Because you will soon realize everyone is hurting. Everyone has struggles. They can come to church and they can go to work and they can put their mask on. But all of us have our sins and all of us have our struggles. And all of us need God 
to forgive us and to work through us. If you want to work for God, all you have to do is be a willing vessel. And God can use any vessel to do what he wants us to do. The key there was willing. See, once Jesus perceived in his heart that the critics were saying, who can do this? God is saying, I can do this. Whatever needs to be done, I can do this. And I'm saying as the body of Christ, what we need to do, sometimes we need the healing. And sometimes God wants to use us to be the anointing to heal someone else. See, Jesus didn't quit when he was criticized. I don't quit even when criticized is the point. Jesus did not quit when the Pharisees said, Who are you to say thy sins be forgiven? Who are you to forgive sins? God alone can forgive sins. And sometimes in our healing, and sometimes in our action, and sometimes what we are going to do, people will criticize you. They will mock you. They will laugh at you. And they'll say, you Christian. Why? Sometimes we just need to say, I am going to walk through the criticism. You know, we live in a so-called Christian world. In a Christian country. Where it's not a big deal to come to church. It's not a big deal to carry your Bible. It's not a big deal to pray. But there are many countries that cannot do what we do. And you know that's why, and I, I, I'm the leader of this church, and I need to say this, and I believe that is why sometimes our churches become very apathetic, is because we have no obstacles. We can walk through the doors and we can do what we want to do, but there are no obstacles in front of us. Nobody ridiculing us and criticizing us for being a Christian. And sometimes what we do is we come to church and we put on our Christian clothes. And we carry our Christian Bible. And we sing our Christian songs. And we come around to other Christians. And we are fine. Because nobody is criticizing us. Nobody is mocking us. And nobody is hurting us. So what we have become in our culture today. Is although we are Christians. We are satisfied of our salvation. But we really don't care for other people's salvation. Because if I pray for somebody that's not a believer, they may criticize me. They may mock me. And they may even laugh at me. So I want you to get this quote. Before you talk to somebody about Christ, talk to Christ about that somebody. Before you start ministering, get the anointing. Ask for the power of God. And when you get the power of God upon your life, God can do supernatural things. It is a wonderful thing when you're anointed. Anointing. It just means this. God is using you. God can use you supernaturally. Whether you're anointed to minister to others or you're being anointed for yourself, God can heal you. In our culture today, there's all kinds of healing that needs to take place. I'm not even going to go political, but God can heal us in many different areas. But in the church today, God wants to heal you. So, I want to ask you to do this. I'm going to go old school. Can I go old school for a second? I need you to close your eyes for a second. Every person in here. What we're going to do is nobody else's business but yours. This is between your pastor and God and yourself. How many people in here physically 
need God to heal you. You got ailments, you got issues, and you need God to touch your life. Okay, thank you. How many in here knows somebody that is dying and going to hell if they do not change their eternal situation? Raise your hand. How many people in here know of somebody that is addicted to something? Drugs, alcohol, they've, they're, they're caught up in addictions. Thank you. How many people in here know of somebody that's mentally, neurologically, strong, struggling with their life? Raise your hand. You know what we are? We are the body of Christ. And Jesus is in the house. Jesus wants to take the person that you're thinking about now. And it may be you personally. You may be struggling with your own health or within your own life. And I ask you this. Let's participate. Let us do something today that we've never been able to do. Let us have the courage to ask God to anoint us with God's power. And once we are anointed with God's power, with the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon our life for our own healing and for the influence of others, let us get up out of our seats today and say, I am not going to be the same tomorrow because I was anointed with the power of of the Holy Spirit today.